And one you thing you should notice is when they're classified, um, it's actually subbeak, um, and that refers to a certain pair of mouth parts that they all share in common. But in general, um, these organisms all fall into this class as well. Um, so the main ones we'll talk about in this group are spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. However, there are several other species of arachnids that we won't discuss. Um, and you maybe came across these in your arachnid research. For example, a pseudoscorpion or a whip scorpion or something known as a vinegaroon, um, a camel spider, a daddy long legs. Those are all arachnids, but they don't really fit into the spider, scorpion, tick, or mite category because they're classified differently. Um, when we're looking at arachnid, one trait I hope you noticed when you watched those videos was the fact that their body is composed of two sections. Okay, and those two sections are the cephalothorax and the abdomen. So if you remember from last week, that cephalothorax is that fused head and middle region of the body. Um, and then the abdomen is that second part of their body, which you maybe even think of as like being a tail. So if you're looking at a scorpion, you might call that hind end its tail, but actually the correct term to use would be abdomen. Another trait they tend to share in common is the fact that they have eight legs and four mouth parts. Um, so if you look at that spider there, you should be able to see those eight legs pretty easily. Um, and then the four mouth parts, really another way to put it is they have two pairs of the same type of mouth part. Um, when we're looking at these guys, uh, we have a tick on the bottom picture. That's how they look like when they're full of blood. Um, and then the tick and the mite, which is that furry little red guy above, they both have, um, where their cephalothorax and their abdomen, a lot of times they don't have that definition between the two. So if you look at that little tick below, you probably notice, oh, I only see two sections to the body. That's because they're modified a little bit differently. Something to keep in mind about both those, that furry little red mite, um, and then the ticks, uh, the ticks, several of them are parasites, and the mites, several of them are parasites as well, but not all. Uh, and the mites you've probably not seen before because they tend to be pretty small in general, but they do still have those um, arachnid traits. This page is really good for looking at the different parts of the arachnid. So the cephalothorax and abdomen, that first picture on the top left, shows that really well. You can see the cephalothorax first and the abdomen second. You can see how that's divided up. Um, whereas if you just kind of picture a spider in your head, you might picture it all as one. So again, remember cephalothorax means the head and middle section are fused, and the abdomen is just what you maybe would call a tail. Then if you look at the little guy to the right, we see the same thing. So we see the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Notice that this picture, though, too, is pointing out the spinnerets, which you can see in the other picture. Um, and then the other reason I like this one as well is it shows the pulps, which is one of those um, mouth parts. And I don't want to get too in-depth with the mouth parts today because that's going to be our structure and function and focus for this part of the unit. But you should be able to see on the picture on the lower left, they definitely have two pairs of mouth parts. Um, there's the pair on the outside, which are known as the pulps or the pedipulps, and the pair on the inside, which are known as chelicera, which is where the uh, subphylum gets their name. So that's where we'll end with our arachnid characteristics today, but um, make sure, again, in your notebooks, you write down things you've learned and questions you still have.